Hello, I'm Jamila Musaeva, an international social etiquette consultant and the author of the book Etiquette, the least you need to know. Today's topic is dedicated to something that none of you has actually asked to do a video on, but I decided to shoot it on specifically this topic because I believe it will help you in choosing the right colors that will be best for you for your makeup as well as your clothing choices. By the way, if you are new to my channel, please make sure you subscribe and don't forget to like and comment underneath telling me what are some topics that you would like me to shoot more videos on and I'll be more than happy to do that for you. You're all familiar with the term the skin tone. A lot of us know that's basically the color of our skin and we usually describe it as dark, tanned, olive, fair, light, pale. The color of our skin can change over the years as a result of getting more tanned or perhaps as we change the locations where we live. So if we live in a warmer place, obviously we'll get more sun, so our skin will produce more melanin and we'll get more tanned. So that can change over the years, but the undertone, which is a completely different thing, will not change over the years. It usually stays the same, regardless of the color of the skin that we have. For the longest time, makeup artists have been focused on finding the right makeup that suits the color of the skin, where there's something more important, the undertone that they have overlooked over the years. And when people are shopping for the right color to match their overall skin and undertone, they have a lot of trouble because the makeup lines haven't actually created the perfect products that suit both the skin tone as well as the undertone. However, over the years, they have extended their products to include different kind of skin tones as well as they have included elements that will help you find the right makeup for your undertone. So what is an undertone? An undertone is the color of underneath your skin that affects your overall hue. So it could be cool, warm, or neutral. Let me first explain the three different undertones that exist. There is a cool one that has the notes of blue, reddish, purplish color to it. The warm undertone that has more yellowy, golden, browny notes to it. And the neutral one, which is a mixture of warm and the cool. How can you identify your undertone? There are three tests that you can do at home in order to find out what your undertone is. Number one is looking at your wings. Blue or purplish wings, you have a cool undertone. If your wings look more green, then you have a warm undertone. If your wings really don't stand out from your skin color, they blend in with your skin, then you have a neutral undertone. The second test that you can use is trying on different color jewelry. So I'm sure you have at home different color accessories, the golden ones, the silver ones, and the rosy ones. Try them on and see whichever looks good on you. They'll wear white gold or perhaps even rosy gold look good on you, then you have a cool undertone. If yellow gold looks good on you, then you have a warm undertone. If both golden and yellow look good on you, then you have a neutral undertone. Test number three is try on a white t-shirt to see what kind of undertone you have. You can also use beige, brown, and dark black color in order to find out what undertone you have. When you put on the white shirt and your face becomes lighter, brighter, more pink or rosy in complexion, then you have a cool undertone. If white makes you look more yellow, then you have a warm undertone. To taste if that's your case, put on a beige or off-white t-shirt. If that looks better on you than a white t-shirt, then you have a warm undertone. If both white and off-white look good on you, then you have a neutral undertone. You can also use the color brown and black to test. If brown looks better on you, then you have a warm undertone. If black looks good on you, then you have a cool undertone. There's another way of testing your undertone. Generally speaking, if you tan easily, then you have a warm undertone. If you burn fast, then you have a cool undertone. If you first burn, but then tan, you have a neutral undertone. In my personal experience, I fall under the category of neutral one in that case, but based on the other three tests, I fall under the cool undertone. So to be honest, I don't quite frankly believe in the tanning method to understand your undertone. Stick to the first three tests. Having identified your undertone, you're more likely to pick the right colors for your makeup as well as your clothing. 
If you have a cool undertone, choose a concealer with a pink tint. If you have a warm undertone, opt for a yellowish concealer. If you have a neutral one, then mix concealer from both to match your skin undertone. For lip gloss, lipsticks and blush, if you have a cool undertone, go for red, pink or rosy colors. If you're looking for a perfect red lipstick, find the one that has a cool undertone to it, so it's dark yellow with no orangish undertones. If you have a warm undertone, go for a peachy pink, orange rind and nude colors. A perfect red lipstick in this case will be the one with orangish tone to it. For bronzer and highlighters, a cool undertone should preferably not use much of a bronzer or if you want to use it then opt for the one that has cooler undertone to it. You'll know when you see one. You can choose highlighters that have a pink or silverish undertone to them. If you have a warm undertone, you can go for any dark colored bronzer and feel free to apply it generously. You can also use highlighter with yellow or orangish undertones to it. Knowing your undertone will come handy when you are applying a neutral makeup. Knowing your skin tone as well as your undertone will help you find the right beauty items that will help you enhance your natural beauty. So knowing the skin color as well as the undertone, you'll find the concealer that will actually look like you're not wearing any. And then when choosing a lip gloss, eyelid, eyeshadow, you will go for the colors that are two shades either lighter or darker than your lip, your cheek and your eyelid. In my case, I have a pale skin and I have a cool undertone. So when choosing a concealer, I go for the one that has more pinkish, beigeish tint to it, so when I apply it, it actually blends in well with my skin. When choosing a lipstick or a blush or a highlighter, I go for the one that has more rosy complexion to it, rosy tint to it, so it actually enhances the color of my lips as well as my cheeks. I do the same on my eyelids and then if I want to go for a more fancy look, I'll just add a bit of an eyeliner to highlight my eyes. But that's pretty much my everyday makeup that I'm applying every day for work and for leisurely activities. I hope that you found this video useful and applicable in your daily life and I do hope that it helps you make the revolutionary changes that you want to do in your makeup as well as your wardrobe. Please do let me know if you found these tips useful and you've been using them. I'll be more than happy to film more videos on personal image building and style. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!